that the dribbling dart of love can pierce a complete bosom. Why I desire thee to give me secret harbor hath a purpose more grave and wrinkled than the aims and ends of burning you. May your grace speak of it. None, holy sir, knows better than you how I have ever loved the life removed and held an idle price to haunt assemblies where youth and cost and witless bravery keeps. Now you will demand of me why I do this. Uh, gladly, my lord. We have strict statutes and most biting laws, the needful bits and curbs to headstrong weeds, which for this 19 year we have let slip. And now, as fond fathers having bound up the threatening twigs of birch to stick it in their children's sight for terror not to use, in time the rod becomes more mocked than fear. Uh, it rested in your grace to unloose this tied up justice when you pleased. It ain't in you more dreadful would have seen than in Lord Angelo. I do fear too dreadful. Since t'was my fault to give the people scope to be my tyranny to strike and gall them for what we bid them do. For we bid this be done when evil deeds have their permissive pass and not the punishment. Therefore, indeed, Holy Father, I have indeed imposed the office on Lord Angelo, who may in the ambush of my name strike home, and yet my nature never in the fight to do and slander. And to behold his sway, I will, as to a brother of your order, Visit both prince and people. Therefore, I pray thee, supply me with the habit, and instruct me how I may formally in person bear me like a true friar. More reasons for this at our more leisure shall I render you. Only this one. Angelo is precise, stands at a guard with envy, scarce confesses that his blood flows, or that his appetite is more to bread than stone. Hence shall we see if power change purpose what our seamers be. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth goes marching. farther privileges. Or are not these large enough? Yes, truly. I speak not as desiring more, but rather wishing a more strict restraint upon the sisterhood, the votress of St. Clair. Oh! Peace be within this place! Who's that which calls? It is a man's voice. Gentle Isabella, please turn the key and know his business of him. You may. I may not. You are yet unsworn. Once you have vowed, you must not speak with men, but in the presence of the priors. Then, if you speak, you must not show your face, or if you show your face, you must not speak. Who? Hmm? Oh, oh, there, I say! I call again, I pray you answer him. Peace and prosperity, who's it that calls? Hail, virgin, if you be, as those cheek roses proclaim, you are no less. Can you so stead me as bring me to the side of Isabella, a novice of this place, and the fair sister to her unhappy brother Claudio? Why her unhappy brother, let me ask. The rather say now must make you know I am that Isabella and his sister. Gentle and fair, your brother kindly greets you. Not to be weary with you, he's in prison. Fool me for what? For that which, if myself might be his judge, he should receive his punishment and thanks. He hath got his friend with child. Sir, make me not your story. It is true. I would not, though tis my familiar sin, with maids to seem the lapwing and a jest tongue far from heart, play with all virgins so. I hold you as a thing in skied and sainted. By your renouncement and immortal spirit to be talked with insincerity as with a saint. You do blaspheme the good in mocking me. Do not believe it. Funus in truth tis thus. Your brother and his lover have embraced. Those that feed grow full, 
It's blossoming time that to the sea this the bare fallow brings to teeming poison. Even so, her plenteous womb expresseth his full tilth and husbandry. Someone with child by him? My cousin, Juliet? Is she your cousin? Adoptedly, as schoolmates change their names by vain though act affection. She it is. Oh, let him marry her. Uh, this is the point. The Duke is very strangely gone from hence. For many gentlemen, myself being one in hand and hope of action, but we do learn by those that know the very nerves of state his givings out were of an infinite distance from his true men design. Upon his place and with full line of his authority governs Lord Angelo, a man whose blood is very snow broth, has picked out an act under whose heavy sense your brother's life falls into forfeit. He arrests him on it and follows close the rigor of the statute to make him an example. All hope is lost unless you have the power by your fair prayer to soften Angelo. 